Okay, now, I, yeah, okay. Thanks. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, good morning, all. Uh, I'm Chaturangi, and I'm going to present the paper, uh, Machinery Fault Diagnosis Based on Deep Learning uh, for Time Series Analysis and Knowledge Graphs. Uh, this is a paper published in uh, 2021 in Journal of Signal Processing Systems Springer. And uh, this is the outline of the presentation. First, uh, I would start with motivation and intuition, and then uh, go towards the approaches in fault diagnosis, and then go into preliminaries, and then the framework these researchers are proposing, and then uh, going towards the experiments and ending by the conclusion. Uh, so, to see uh, some of the motivation behind this research, uh, so the rise of Industry 4.0. Uh, has caused to a major revolution in manufacturing domain. And today, industry people spend billions of dollars to adapt AI in manufacturing. And at the same time, one of the biggest drags on factory output is unplanned downtime. According to Forbes, in 2022, the downtime can waste up to 800 hours per year, and it's roughly 15 hours per week. So these shutdowns are detrimental. So for example, the average automotive manufacturer may lose $22,000 per minute when the, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yeah. when the production line stops and it can waste up to 1% to 10% of the available production time. Basically, uh, these faults can be either complete failure of an equipment or a piece of equipment or in production line or it can be either a drift in performance uh, that can be caused by the change in set points like pressure or speed and schedules or uh, defects in equipments, or it can be either even human errors. A recent case study states that fault detection saves 30 cents per square foot of potential waste. Thus, it's very crucial. So moving on to the paper, these researchers focus on the problem of accurate and complete fault diagnosis, in which they propose a hybrid fault diagnosis approach for the mechanical equipment named rolling bearing device, as I have included in this figure. So this approach combines 1D CENN, GRU, attention mechanism, and knowledge graphs. Basically, the CNN and GRU has been used for feature extraction and knowledge graph is used in obtaining more relevant information on the faults. Then uh, going to uh, that has been used in fault diagnosis. So as I have summarized in this chart, many efforts have been made so far in fault diagnosis of rolling bearing as traditional deep learning, attention-based ontologies and the newly emerged hybrid approaches. So generally, Two categories of uh, fault diagnosis traditionally identified as qualitative, uh, which can be either expert systems of fault trees, and quantitative, like wavelet transforms, spectral analysis, and rough sets. Uh, these uh, traditional methods can solve fault diagnosis to a certain extent, but they face some challenges. Like firstly, uh, these fault diagnosis methods heavily rely on expert experiences. And also uh, in these traditional machine learning methods, fault classification and recognition are performed after manually extracting the features. So such a two-stage process may actually may waste time. And also uh, the fault diagnosis is not very informative, which means it produces high level results and also uh, these methods only extract a small number of feature values from the vibration signals in their diagnosis. So that uh, may cause loss in uh, many important fault diagnosis information. Uh, so deep learning methods uh, emerged uh, providing much stability and accuracy in fault diagnosis. Uh, so even the CNN was not good in time series learning, the approaches like RNN, LSTM, and GRUs has provided better results. But 
deep planning methods were also not able to provide a full diagnosis and they were not informative. Uh, then uh, the use of attention mechanisms uh, can ensure the important features receive more attention and so accurate, a more accurate fall diagnosis was returned. But uh, using only these attention mechanisms in diagnosis were not adequate in full fault diagnosis. So in addition to this, ontologies have been applied for fault diagnosis in some recent researches, where ontologies has served as a domain knowledge base in diagnosis descriptions. However, uh, the fault ontologies cannot be directly applied to diagnosis faults with fault data or either time series fault data. So for these problems, this research proposed a hybrid fault diagnosis method for mechanical components. Uh, so it combined the deep learning methods, ontologies, and also it bring in, brings the merits of the CNN attention mechanisms and also GREs. So then uh, going to the preliminaries I used in this research. So this research is uh, focused on CNNs, GRNNs, GRUs, uh, attention mechanisms, and ontologies and knowledge graphs. So this uh, given figure in the top right, in the bottom right corner, it includes the classes and the fault uh, diagnosis ontology model example, uh, which has been proposed in some earlier research. And then the uh, bottom left corner, it includes a LANET 5 model diagram, which is mostly used in computer vision-like approaches. Then uh, going towards the fault diagnosis framework they are proposing. Uh, so this uh, given figure uh, summarizes the framework they are proposing. Uh, so it includes four main components. The first main component is the data processor, uh, where it takes the time series raw data as input as shown in the figure and then it performs data preprocessing and data splitting. The second main component is the uh, at 1D CNN GRU model where the preliminary fault diagnosis is done. And then the third main component is the entity matching table. And the fourth main component is the knowledge graph. Then I will describe each of these four components in detail. Uh, so the first main component is the data collection and the processing. Uh, so uh, this is responsible for the collection of the data and how they are processed. Uh, so this whole site includes the details on the apparatus that are used in the data collection and the procedures they have followed. Uh, actually, this uh, the Bayerian data set was created by Case Western Rivers University. And this data set is a popular data set used in fault diagnosis research in manufacturing domain. Uh, so as in the figure right side, uh, this bearing equipment includes two horsepower motor in left and a torque transducer and encoder in the center, a dynamometer in right and also color control electronics. So the data has been gathered here in three channels using three wares as inner raceway wear, outer raceway wear, and ball bearing wear. Uh, here, so the vibration signals uh, were collected using two accelerometers placed in the drive end and fan end of the apparatus as sh uh, shown in the uh, bottom figure. Uh, so uh, here the be bearing motor includes diameters of uh, 7, 14, 21, and 28, milliseconds, uh, which are uh, measured in thousands of an inch. Uh, so here the original data sets include normal baseline data, fault data uh, that are collected in uh, different sample rates as uh, 12 kilohertz and 48 kilohertz, which are 10 seconds each duration in between the rows. And all these data are in MATLAB format. And when talking about the data processing steps, so these vibration signals were also collected using the sensors like 
the vibration signal current center and also speed sensor. So these particular authors in this research have obtained the data files from the original data set uh, with respect to the various operating conditions and also various loads and various motor speeds uh, to ensure the data sufficiency. In this study, only three types of fault di diameters has been taken into consideration as a 7, 14, and 21 mils. So as shown in this figure, they have first splitted the raw sum series data into training, validation, and testing uh, for data processing. And then uh, this is the fault diagnosis model they are proposing. It's named as uh, ATT, 1D CNN GRU model. So it includes three main components as the CNN component, GRU, and the attention mechanism. Uh, so here, firstly, the 1D CNN takes the time series data, the roll bearing data, as the 1D input vector, and then it uses the convolutional layer for feature extraction. And also batch normalization layer is used to prevent overfitting. And then uh, they apply max boolean layer for uh, feature dimension reduction. And then the output of 1D CNN is then uh, sent through the dropout layer to further prevent overfitting. Uh, next, the GRU layer takes this output and then uh, as the input and it performs secondary feature extraction. Uh, so next, uh, the attention mechanism acts on the GRU output feature graphs and it assigns different weights to each feature channels. So here, uh, the attention mechanism is implemented in two parts, uh, where the first part uses mean pooling so that the pooled value can represent the entire feature graph. And then the second part generates weights for each feature channel through these uh, two dense layers. Then after that, uh, the multiply layer takes the weights generated as the importance of each feature, and then it adds it up to the uh, original feature channels. And then finally, the output layer connected to the dense layer performs the fault classification. Uh, so here, this paper includes nine types of uh, faults uh, plus the normal conditions. So the output is uh, 10 by one vector. Uh, then the third main component of this research is the ontologies and knowledge graph. So uh, they have used protege tool to construct the ontology, the bearing fault ontology, and then they use the seven step method. Uh, that's an ontology modeling method that's used to analyze the constructed ontologies. Uh, so as shown in the uh, left figure on the ontology, it includes five categories as a fault phenomenon, a fault cause, a fault location, fault phenomenon attributes, and fault maintenance method. Uh, the right figure uh, shows some ontology instances in their models, uh, which includes the part of RB uh, is an instance of the fault location class uh, that uh, decides in which location the fault is happened, and then the RBFC includes an instance of instance of fault cause class. That means the reason for the faults. And the RBFM includes an instance of fault measure class. And also the RBFP are including an instance of the fault class and likewise respectively. So uh, the, this, the entity matching table is another important component they are proposing. So they use this entity matching table uh, as a bridge to connect their model and knowledge graphs for fault diagnosis. So they have manually created this entity matching table using the bearing dataset specification included in the uh, bearing websites. Uh, so here the first, so here in this table, the first column indicates the classification of the fault results that are initially diagnosed by the model. And the second column shows the fault instances that correspond to the class names in the knowledge graph.
Uh, so uh, going towards the experiments and the analysis methods they have conducted. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, they have considered nine types of failures uh, plus normal condition. Uh, so altogether, there are 10 sub data sets they have used as in the uh, given table too. Uh, all these are correspondent correspond to the case western rivers university role in bearing data set. Uh, so here in this table, the these 7, 14, 21 are the diameters of the motor, and the inner wheel are all in there, the outer race where is all the other data specifications on the original data set. Uh, so here, uh, as included in the right side figure. Uh, there are evidently uh, significant differences in the signal vibrations among these uh, different types of fault signals. So uh, talking on their data specifications, uh, all these are in the MATLAB format. So this is an example of the uh, 12K drive and bearing fault data, which I have obtained from the uh, original bearing data center website. Uh, so uh, as shown, each of these uh, ends include data uh, with respect to uh, different fault diameters. There are four fault diameters, and also each file includes data that are collected from the inner race, ball bearing, and the outer race. And also, it includes the approximate uh, speed of the motor. And also, the data are recorded in timestamps. So uh, going towards the data processing part, so they have conducted three main techniques in data processing. Like first, they have conducted splitting of their data sets into training, validation, and testing data sets. And also in creating the experimental data sets, uh, they have considered the severity of the faults uh, from minor, general to severe, as included in this table. So and each of the data were collected using a sample length of uh, 124. And also they have used one hot encoding and standardization like techniques also. And then uh, going towards the experimental results. Uh, so the left figure in this slide, uh, here is a, a confusion matrix resulted in the analysis of a 12K drive N. So here, uh, the diagonal values are all close to one. So uh, it demonstrates the uh, superior feature extraction ability of this model. And also, so this whole model approximates to be like a black box. Uh, so they have used TSNE, which is T-distributed stochastic neighbor embedding method uh, to visualize the internal information. So as in the visualization in the right figure, the individual fault categories has been distinctly divided. So which that indicates that the capability of this model. And then uh, they have conducted extensive uh, model validation and comparison uh, in order to prove the effectiveness of their approaches. Uh, so likewise, firstly, they have uh, conducted tests on different data set ratios between the training and the testing data sets. And also, uh, secondly, they have conducted tests on uh, bearing data sets under different conditions, uh, which are summarized in table five. Like uh, they have used motors with different horsepowers and different uh, drive ends and uh, fan ends. And also, uh, they have conducted ablation experiments uh, uh, for their machine learning model. And then uh, they, they have used different model evaluation indexes like. Uh, as shown in table eight, they have used uh, different recalls, uh, precisions like mod, uh, methods to uh, uh, compare their uh, accuracy with the other uh, models like 1D CNN GRU and uh, 1D CNN baseline models. And also they have compared their method with other models uh, as shown in table nine. Uh, where they have compared their model with uh, SVNs, LSTM, and backpropagation networks. And 
uh, these slides includes uh, the visualization of the uh, feature distribution at different stages uh, when in the training. So uh, actually the authors have shown this change process of feature distribution from the initial stage to the final stage. So as you can see in this figure, in the beginning, uh, the data features are clustered together. Uh, so it don't have apparent boundaries. And as the training process goes on, the boundaries among the data features has become more and more apparent. Uh, so then uh, going towards the fifth main component, the ontology of modeling and how the knowledge graph is used. Uh, so uh, by using the ontology and the knowledge graph, uh, they have analyzed and identified the bearing fall, bearing failure phenomenon, failure locations and failure causes and the maintenance methods that need to be taken. So as an example, uh, example is given here. Uh, so suppose that the fault type of the initial diagnosis returned from the model is three. So then based on the machine table information, uh, we can uh, draw a query statement. Uh, likewise, the given uh, that includes a minor fault of inner pitting corrosion under this uh, fault di di diameter correspond to the class name of three. And uh, so as shown in the given figure in the right, uh, it shows the query result, which is returned uh, so that includes the fault phenomenon, fault location, measures, and like relevant information. So this is another example where the initial diagnosis is five, and likewise, it returns the results uh, that includes the full fault diagnosis results from the knowledge graph. And uh, these are the uh, ontologies they have created for the a separate uh, mechanisms like fault phenomenon, a fault location, a fault cause, and also the fault maintenance methods. So uh, finally, going towards the uh, conclusions and further works they are proposing. Uh, so uh, when talking about the advantages, so these proposed methods can optimize the performance of the uh, deep learning model for further combining the deep learning methods with knowledge graphs for fault diagnosis. And also it's able to make comprehensive fault diagnosis by making full use of the existing fault knowledge. So uh, the limit, but the limitations of this approach is that uh, this research has not conducted noise reduction techniques of the signals. So that has actually resulted in few failure classifications. Uh, so even though this research, research has a better diagnosis results, uh, it has high computational loads. So that actually has resulted in longer processing times. Uh, so for further work, they are proposing, like uh, they are investigating using similarity matching instead of the entity matching table, so that the other types of faults, which are not in the entity matching table can also can be utilized. And also then, uh, they aim to use knowledge graph as a primary tool in troubleshooting. And that's the end of the presentation. I would like to take questions if you have. Uh, hi, this is Mike Hunes. Um, thank you, uh, Chaturangi. That was an excellent presentation of this paper. Uh, I have a couple of sort of high level uh, comments to make about uh, this effort. Um, first of all, there are two basic types of faults that might occur in a manufacturing process. Um, and one of them is suitable for this type of analysis and the other is more suitable for a, a higher level, maybe rule-based analysis. Uh, so this fault diagnosis is very similar to a disease diagnosis. And uh, so if someone goes to a doctor and says, I have a headache, then um, this is similar to uh, you're manufacturing a car and the door handle falls off. Um, 
it's if the door handle falls off, then maybe replenish the screws in the robotic arm that screws door handles on. You don't need to uh, do any signal analysis. Uh, and if someone has a headache, then uh, tell them to take an aspirin. Uh, on the other hand, if uh, you measure the EEG of a human and you get a signal, then uh, it's more signal analysis. And that's similar to if you're manufacturing an automobile, um, if you run the engine and you detect some certain vibrations, then you can analyze those signals and knowing from those vibrations, uh, you can diagnose it as a problem with uh, uh, the cylinders or the valves or things like that. Um, so um, for the first type of diagnosis, a certainly an ontology knowledge graph rule-based approach is most appropriate. And the sort of machine learning signal analysis uh, part is sort of irrelevant. But for the other types of signals that you might have, uh, then uh, the approach in the paper is, uh, is very appropriate. And uh, the, for me, the interesting parts is where there is a sort of a combination of methods needed uh, to both uh, take advantage of any common sense that you might have along with the signals. So for example, if there's certain vibrations in a motor, whether it's for a, a dyn dynamometer or uh, the engine, then uh, if the sort of primary frequency of that vibration is the same as the uh, RPMs, then you might uh, look at the shaft. Um, if it's four times uh, the um, RPMs, then uh, in a car engine, it might be the valves because a particular valve opens and closes uh, four times during one rotation of the shaft. And so the high level knowledge about the primary frequency can guide the uh, sort of machine learning approach um, like uh, this paper addresses. So that's all. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you for the ideas, Dr. Evans. Did the, did the author compare uh, their results with, uh, so I, the, the, you mentioned the database, I suppose it's a, it's an open access data set. There, there's a link to it in the in the paper, although the link doesn't work. Um, so I suppose other authors tested, so uh, try to do the same kind of classification. Uh, yeah, uh, they have uh, conducted uh, these comparison techniques. That means uh, they have evaluated uh, they have evaluated their model with uh, other models like uh, 1D CNN GRUs, and uh, these are all the like the baseline methods they have taken. Yeah, but that's not the same thing as uh, comparing with the results of uh, another studies, right? So the the thing is that uh, authors that propose a new approach, they always fine tune and develop better their own approach than the other approach that they implement to compare with. Mm -hmm. um, so now I was just I was just curious. Do you have the paper open? Sorry? Do you have the paper open? Uh, just because I want to refer to a figure and it would not make that much sense if, uh, um, if people don't see it. I particularly, I particularly like the figure. Uh, 29 <laughs> and so i like it so when, when we do um these kind of uh clustering in in um in biomedical data um often what we get is more like the first so yeah this one yeah, so often often we get kind of a it's more like a completely uh, mixed up uh, overlapping uh, distribution like the first one. And I like how they show from one step to the next, how they manage to um, iteratively uh, split these cluster. 
But when I see um, the kind of results that they report, like 0 0.99.8 accuracy or something like that, it just makes me wonder, is, is it just an easy problem or, or is it actually a hard problem and they really did something very good. And that's why I was, I was asking with respect to um, other paper, if like you have 10 previous studies that uh, reach uh, point, uh, point 0.9 and they reach point 0.99, I'd be very excited about it. If the other paper reach point uh, 0.997 and they reach point 0.998, uh, I would say, well, maybe <laughs> move to a harder problem, right? Um, yeah, just just some thoughts. I mean, it's not really questions; more like thoughts about uh, about their their paper there. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, Doctor Christian, I also had uh, that question because uh, the when talking about the faults in manufacturing domain, uh, the faults don't happen very frequently. Uh, so in this data set, actually, uh, they have uh, collected data from both the fault and the normal conditions. So likewise, in their model, they have taken uh, similar uh, like samples for both the uh, two classes. Uh, so that may be a reason where their accuracy is very high. Uh, but actually, in normal situations, uh, since the the frequency of happening faults is very low. Uh, it's better that if we seek for data sets uh, that has the same problem in it, likewise the class imbalance problem, but here they have not taken into consideration the class imbalance problem. So mm -hmm. if they consider the imbalance issue in it, uh, so their accuracy won't be much high, I think, if they uh, have even if they have produced some uh, good models, because uh, they are some rare events in industry. Yeah, no, that's that's true. Uh, when you have very rare events, it's much harder to uh, not have uh, lots of false positive. The, the difference also when you are working with um, engineered system versus uh, biological system, for example, is that um, engineer system, often, not always, but often have a very clear signature. So um, I, I would guess that, so the neatly um, kind of, the, the ability of neatly clustering different uh, faults in a completely non-overlapping cluster um, may be more achievable in, in engineered system than in the, uh, um, biological system with uh, sometimes um, not so clearly defined uh, uh, faults. Uh, like some disease, some disease are more like spectrums, right? That with fuzzy border, whereas um, some engineering system will have more like, it's more like a binary thing. This fault is there or it's not there. Whereas um, in, in biological system, you would have something like, uh, yeah, it's there like 80% and we put the threshold at uh, 75. So yeah, that's a positive case, <laughs> right? So it's, yeah. So I think Saba is, uh, is not, uh, Saba was supposed to present the second. Uh, talk yeah, and... please, you can she notified me, so I posted in the group. Mm. So I suppose if nobody has any question or anything to come at, uh, we can adjourn there. Any last comment or things someone would like to discuss? All right, well then, have a, have a nice week.